Welcome everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tudor, back today with the Geometry Node. This one has never been done before, and I know for any underwater scenes, you're going to want to get your hands on this Geometry Node. Now if you want to find out how you can get this Geometry Node and all our other Geometry Nodes and all our courses for free, then make sure you stay till the end and find out how you can do that. So let's actually take a look. So straight off the bat, this is what you're actually going to get. So you can see we've got a scene like this. You will actually get this scene. So you will get all the lighting. You will get the actual water material. You will get these God rays. And more importantly, you will also get the composite setup. So if I pull this over, you can see we've set up all the composite. So it will actually look exactly like we've got it here, which is really, really important for you guys. Next of all, then, you will see on the right hand side, Everything is neatly laid out. So when you actually get this geometry node, you won't have any problems finding your way around it. Everything is laid out perfectly well. All right, so let's move on and let's go to object mode. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you over here the actual collections. So if I just grab one of these, press the dot button, and then I can actually see them. So you can see these have been painstakingly made and actually painted to look like actual coral reef. And then what we've done is we've put them in collection. So if we take the first one, which is the small side plants, let's zoom in. You can see actually these are what they look like. And all of these have then been set out into collections, which you can use on your own coral reef. So it's up to you whether you want seaweed in there, whether you want some kelp, whether you want some hard crustaceans. Everything is completely up to you which of these you actually use. We've made this so easy to use that you'll never struggle again to make a coral reef. The other thing is, of course, with all these collections, if you want to put your own collections in there, so in other words, if you want to make some more soft crustaceans, then just drop them in there, and then you'll be able to use them within your own geometry you node. Next of all, then, these are the materials that we've actually created, and you can see they're pretty nice. This one here is the actual uh, top, um, those outcroppings, the mushrooms. This is the actual walls of the coral, and finally, this is the actual sun. And we've gone, Paul a kind of stylized look here but at the end of the day you can change around these materials as well once I get into using the geometry node because we've made it as easy as possible the other thing then you're going to get is you're going to get some this on the left hand side and this is here just to make sure that you're not actually going to lose that geometry node in other words if I come over to the right hand side you will see that it's actually got the coral generator applied to it so as long as you don't delete this you'll always have that coral generator available to use in all of the other scenes in other words to use this in your own scene just simply press ctrl c and ctrl v in a new blender and then you'll have this on there all right so how do we actually use it the more most important part so what i'm going to do is i've made it so easy to use i'm going to press shift a i'm going to bring in a curve so i'm going to bring in a circle i'm going to go over the top i'm going to press tab and what i'm going to do is just give it a few more um subdivisions you don't have to but i'm going to just to make it a little bit easier to move around. And then from there, all I'm going to do is just pull these out a bit. So if I press G then, I can pull these out and just make it a little bit more coral-like into the shape that I want, like so. As easy as that, that's all you need to do. That is a complete setup. Once you've set out this, you don't need to do anything else apart from add on the geometry nodes. Let's now press tab. We're going to reset all of our transforms like so. Right click set origin to geometry, like so. And now we've actually reset all the transforms. Let's come over to the right hand side and add in geometry node and coral generator like so. And now you'll see they all pop up there. Okay, so got moving over then. I will go through all of the options on here. So if you are interested in how this works and how versatile this is, then watch this till the end. Okay, so the first thing we've got here is a seed so we can change how the actual look of our coral looks really really easily and this is basically an infinite amount of seeds so you'll never struggle to get the right look next of all then we've got the density and this is just how dense the actual rocks are if i put this on something like 100 you will see it makes them much much denser closer together and looking a lot more rock like especially with these little mushroom tops i'm going to set this then back to um, actual 10 and what i'm now going to look at is the actual edge distance so the higher I put this, the closer it's going to be to the edge of the sands. So if I put this on something like 0.5, you will see that they actually get way, way closer. So in other words, the smaller the distance, the uh, closer to the edge it's going to be. It's as though it's like 0.5 centimeters away from the edge. And the more coral you're going to have up to the edge, like so. Now working in a scene, I would actually put this back to 
1.5 and work with smaller pots like that because what you can do from here you can press shift d move this over change over the seed and have a completely different actual coral and then run move it around like so and then put it like so and this is how i would work i think it's much much better actually to work this way rather than creating just one massive coral like so all right let's delete that out of the way and let's carry on moving down these options so the next option you've got is size if i turn this to one you will see that it t basically turns up the size of these huge mushrooms so if i put this on something like 0.2 instead you will see now we've got much much uh, smaller mushrooms and a lot more actual coral on there let's set this back then to what it was as standard which is 0.5 Next of all, we've got the minimum uh, layer count and the maximum layer count. The minimum layer count is basically how far down to the sand it's going to come. And the maximum is obviously how tall it's going to come. If you put this on something like 10, you will see now you've got actual 10 layers on there. Again, I'm going to reset that back to default. All of this, when you first actually bring it in as well, are all set to default values, which are very easy to actually work with. Now, we've also got the ability as well as the layer counts to actually control the layer height. If I put this on one now, you can see I've got the ability to control how high or how low these are actually going to come. So I'm going to set mine to something like 0.4 or somewhere around that. Next of all, then we've got the layer height randomness. In other words, the randomness between all of these. If I put this on one, you'll see that we end up with a huge disparity between each of these. And if I set this down to something like zero, then you'll see that they're all actual normalized and all the same height. So I recommend putting this on 0.2 or something like that, having a little bit of difference between them. Next of all, then we've got the top radius randomness. If I set this to one, you can see that it changes the radius of the actual mushroom. So I'm gonna set this to 0.2. All right, and then finally moving down, we've actually got the rocks themselves. So if I come on over, you can see if I put this on object mode, these are our actual rocks. We have the ability, first of all, to change up the resolution. And we've put that in there simply the fact that we've actually got a noise scaler on here. In other words, you can make this really, really rocky if you want, especially if you're using another material, or you can actually keep it really smooth. So if I put this down to one, put the noise value down to 0. Point, uh, in fact, put it down to two, something like that, you can see now we've got much, much smoother edges on there. We're also able then to change the displacement. In other words, how rocky these actual uh, outcroppings are going to be. If I really, really ramp this up to something like 0.2, you will see then we've got a lot more actual uh, rockiness on there. So let's put that back as well. And then finally, we've got the radius multiplier. If I put this on one, you will see what it does is it pulls out all of these actual rocks on there and brings them actually closer together. We've also got a radius randomizer. If I put this on 0.2, you can see it brings them out even further like so. So from here now, we've actually got a really good start to actually start with our actual corals. We have actually made it. As you saw in the beginning, we've actually gave you the materials as well. So if I come on now, put this onto material, you will see that all of those materials are already applied. That is because we've got default materials here. And to change those yourself, all you need to do is just come in and drag and drop your own material onto there or just click this on and change the material like so all right so finally what i recommend is doing now is coming up and actually converting this to mesh so if you go to object convert convert to mesh like so all of those are converted from there then what i recommend that you do is just grab the whole thing so press tab a u smart uv project click ok and then from there what you're going to do is you're going to end up with something like this because they've basically been all unwrapped then what I would do is I think all of the rest of them are okay. We just need to go in, just grab our sand. So L to grab it, U, smart UV project, click OK. And there you go. Now your sand is looking really nice. So you can see already we've got a really, really nice setup just from a few clicks. But now the best part is actually to come. Because what we can actually do now is reset all the transforms like so. So set origin to geometry, add in geometry node. And the one we're going to bring in now is going to be our coral scatter. Now you'll notice, first of all, that all of these collections do tie up with the collection ID. So you can see here, the first one is hard crustaceans. So let's bring that in. What I'm gonna do then is go to collection, come down, hard crustaceans, and nothing happens. And the reason nothing happens, by the way, is because where do you wanna place your crustaceans? Do you want the top, middle, bottom, on the walls, or on the sand? 
But let's come over and bring this slider up and you'll notice, hey ho, we've actually got some crustaceans forming on there. Let's bring them to the middle as well, like so. Let's bring them to the bottom. Let's bring them to the walls and let's bring them to the sand. And there you go. And you can even turn these down to make them less or more like so. And it's as simple as that. Now, the best thing is you've got the ability to change the density of them. So how many do you want around? You've got the ability to change the scale, the scale randomness, lots and lots of things you're able to change. And more importantly as well, you need, you're able to change the offset just in case you need to change some. As well as the seed, you know, if you've got a lot of them actually pointing through here, like so, you can see it's pointing through a little bit, just change the seed and then it'll change that over. And from there you can work from them. Let's put this up then, and now what we're going to do is add in another one. So we're going to go Geometry Node, Down Arrow, Coral Scatter, and this time we'll pick number two, which is Soft Crustaceans. Bring that in. Let's bring some to the top, and there we go. We're able to simply build this up as much as we want really quickly and easily. Now, one thing we've actually done with this Geometry Node, guys, is we've made it so they won't interact with each other. So we've made it like cast a ray, and then if it's actually close to another actual crustacean or another plant, it won't actually appear there. We'll actually delete it and find a new place to put it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna speed up this process. I'm gonna show you actually me building it out. It will take a few clicks and a few minutes, but you'll see just how easily it is. And there you go everyone, it's as simple as that. As you can see now, we've got actually a full actual coral reef. Now you can see I've only added in something like 10 on here. We do have more, we have 12 in total. So you've got all of these actual collections to actually pick from. From there then what you can do is you can actually bring this, swap it to my uh, water shader that I've got here and have a coral reef straight off the bat, looking really nice. Or you can actually come in and populate your own actual scenes. Now I know this geometry node explanation was a bit of a long one, but it's in, I think it's important that we explain our geometry nodes in full for people so they can actually use them. More importantly though, I think this geometry node has never been done before and I think it's one of a kind and I think it's really, really gonna help anyone trying to create underwater scenes in minutes rather than days. All right, everyone, so all the links will be down below. This will be, I think, the 16th geometry node. And as I said many times before, we are aiming for a hundred by the end of the year. You can get these geometry nodes either in a personal license or even a commercial license as well. Now this node will be a little bit more expensive than our other nodes. And that's because we've actually got 60 different meshes, which have took a fair amount of work to put together. I wanna to put a quick video up now to our sponsor, which is us, showing our amazing Patreon. Before I do that though, I'd just like to ask you, Give us a like and subscribe if you really like this sort of content. Please watch our Patreon. You will find it's one of the best in the industry. And until next time, happy modeling, everyone. Cheers. Hey, everyone. Do you want to have access to hundreds of Blender products every single month? Then check out our brand new Patreon setup, which is probably the best in the industry, especially for beginners to Blender. Best of all, we now have four Patreon levels pretty much for any budget. Or if you just wanna follow us over there for the latest news on 3D Tudor, 
then that's also fine. So let's now take a look at these ranks and stay till the end to find out what we really have to offer. So rank one is all about just supporting us at five euros per month. And this is just to say a big thanks for everything that we do here. Rank two at 10 euros per month comes with a free course every single month. And if you've seen the scenes that we've been creating here on YouTube, where you can get your hands on any of these for absolutely free. And you will get your name featured at the end credits of all of our YouTube videos. Moving on and stepping it up to rank three at 19 euros 50 per month, you get pretty much the same as you did in rank two, but this time we also give you two geometry nodes per month absolutely free. And moving on to the big one, which is rank four, the top tier that we have at 48 euros 50 per month, and you pretty much get the whole shebang. Two free courses per month, any of our geometry nodes, any of our model packs, any of our YouTube scenes, but best of all, you also get the complete asset manager file, complete with our entire library of compositors, materials, and assets. And this will just keep growing. So whatever your budget, there's never been a better time to support us here at 3D Tudor. And I think we provide one of the best patrons in the industry. So head on over, check out our Patreon, Follow us over there for the latest news, and if you can, we'd be very grateful for any support, large or small.